Good morning, good morning. This is Greater Gospel Temple and Inspiration of God Ministries right here on the World Wide Web. It's a wonderful, wonderful day. It's such a blessing. God is so good to us. He's super califragilistic expedocious. And I am so thankful to him for everything that he's done, doing, will do in my life and in your life. Our Sunday school lesson this morning is Noble Birth and Noble Character. Noble Birth and Noble Character. We're talking about Ruth again this morning. And our telephone number, I finally uh, got it here, is 469-629-9543. And that is the same number for the seasoning, for Greater Gospel. Temple, for Inspiration of God Ministries. I use that overall number for everything. So you can reach me at that number, which is 469-629-9543. 469-629-9543. Greater Gospel Temple and Inspiration of God Ministries. The Lord is mighty. He's worthy to be praised and I praise him for everything. Our scripture is found in Ruth, the third chapter, the first through the twelfth verses, and then the sixteenth through the eighteenth verses. And as you know, I use the International uh, Bible Lessons Commentary uh, of L. G. Parkhurst Jr. And that is www.ouosu.com. www.ouosu.com. The Lord is good. I know I'm repeating myself, but he is definitely, absolutely super califragilistic expialidocious. Now, and now, my daughter, do not be afraid. I will do for you all that you ask for all the assembly of my people. Know that you are a worthy woman. That is our focal scripture, which is Ruth, the third chapter, and the 11th verse. I'm, go I'm going to the King James Version of the scripture here in Bible Gateway. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? And now is not Boaz of our kindred, and whose maidens thou wast, behold, he went away barley to night in the threshing floor. Wash thyself therefore, and anoint Wash thyself therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man, until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, All that thou sayest unto me I will do. And she went went down unto the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn, and she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman, 
Howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I. Then we go on down to the 16th through the 18th verses of the third chapter of Ruth. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, Who art thou, my daughter? And she told her all that the man had done to her. And she said, These six measures of barley gave he me. For he said to me, Go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. Then said she, Sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall. For the man will not be in rest until he have finished the thing this day. Ah, it's an amazing story. It is such an amazing story. It is such an, an amazing story. We're talking about Ruth, and the subject is noble birth and noble character. And we already know from what they have said that um, she was a virtuous woman. He even told her, and you don't go running around after men, whoever, young or old, okay? Now we're going into the commentary. As poverty-stricken widows, Ruth worked hard to support her elderly mother-in-law by gleaming wheat and barley in the field of Boaz, a kinsman, a relative of Elimelech, Naomi's deceased husband, who had died in Moab. Ruth proved herself a good provider by working long hours at gleaning according to the law of God, and Boaz took notice of her as a virtuous woman who cared for her mother-in-law as though she were her own mother. Therefore, Boaz protected her and made certain she took to Naomi more than she could have humanly gleaned in a day. My goodness, God is good, isn't he? He takes care of us. Naomi loved Ruth so much that when Ruth wanted to go to Bethlehem with her to care for her, on the way, Naomi told her to go back to her family and find a husband in Moab. Ruth refused and put her mother-in-law's happiness and security above her own. She did for Naomi what she would have wanted done for herself had the situation been reversed. So after Ruth had proved herself so faithful and had won the respect of the whole village, Naomi wanted to help her find a husband in Bethlehem so she would have security in her old age. Naomi chose to apply and follow the law of God that provided for a widow's security through a kinsman, redeemer, should she die childless. For Ruth had no children by Malan, the eldest of Naomi's two sons. And we can see that in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy the 25th chapter, the 5th through the 10th verses for the laws concerning the liberate um, marriage. All right. Now, Boaz was a prominent rich man of the family of Elimelech. Therefore, a kinsman who might qualify as a kinsman redeemed or kinsman redeemer. Okay? That's Ruth, the second chapter in the first verse. So Boaz was much older than Ruth, and the young women that Ruth, as a gleamer, had been working with in the fields. So because Boaz had protected and provided for these women as he would have cared for his own daughters. Naomi knew that Boaz had the moral character to be a good husband for Ruth and possibly a kinsman redeemer for her. Therefore, Naomi devised a plan that would keep Boaz and Ruth from disgrace or embarrassment should Boaz refuse to marry Ruth according to the law of God. She knew that Boaz was too old to propose marriage to Ruth with decorum. So she planned for Ruth to follow the laws of God and quietly propose marriage to Boaz through a levirate marriage or a levirate or a levirate, levirate or levirate marriage, okay? Now, Ruth obeyed her mother-in-law. 
She washed and anointed herself and put on her best clothes instead of following the ways of the adulteress as described in the book of Proverbs. Naomi told her not to propose marriage to Boaz in front of others, which might cause embarrassment to them both. There is a way, isn't there? Okay. Because Ruth and Boaz were virtuous, Naomi did not tell Ruth to go and lie beside Boaz, which would not have been a marriage proposal. Feet is not a, is not a euphemism for anything else. By lying down at his feet, Ruth showed Boaz she was willing to serve him and be his wife, even as she had been serving Naomi as her daughter. Boaz would be able to depend on her as his wife because he had seen how dependable she was to care for Naomi as a dreamer in his field. Naomi planned for Ruth to speak quietly to Boaz about marriage in a way that would not dishonor them before the Lord or others. Boaz was no stranger to Ruth. She knew Boaz had cared for and protected her, and he would be a good husband for her. Ruth humbly submitted to Naomi's request, and she did exactly as she was told to do. Though Ruth's way of proposing might not be the way our Christian culture would do things, we have no leverate marriage laws. Naomi and Ruth did the best they knew how, under the circumstances, obey the Lord, the law of God, and let Boaz know that they would be blessed and pleased if he would agree to take Ruth as his wife in a Levirate marriage. All right. Wow. This is super. After a hard day's work, in the early to late evening, when the wind was blowing stronger, they continued their work on the threshing floor. Workers would toss the wheat or barley into the air to separate the grain from the chaff, when the wind would blow, which the wind would blow away. Now, among the other young women, Ruth would have hardly been noticed. Though Boaz was a wealthy farmer, he too worked at threshing and became exhausted. That night, he gave a feast to all his workers. After celebrating, rather than go back to Bethlehem at that late hour, he found a comfortable place to sleep with the grain as a mattress. Ruth did as Naomi told her. She followed the instructions to the team. Something startled Boaz awake, and when he turned over, he discovered a woman lying at his feet. Ruth revealed herself to Boaz in the purest way possible under the circumstances and for good reasons. Following directions, following instructions. When he asked who she was, Ruth identified herself by name, and indicated that she considered herself his servant, not his equal. Therefore, by lying at his feet, she symbolically bowed before him as a servant would bow down at the feet of his or her master. Spread your cloak over your servant was her way of making a marriage proposal. Would he marry her and grant her security as his wife? Her reason for proposing to Boaz was because they were next of kin, which meant that they were related through Malon, her deceased husband. And when she used next of kin, Boaz knew what she wanted. Would Boaz follow the liberate marriage laws and marry her? Would he do it? Da -da, da -da, da -da. Let's see. All right. Now, Boaz blessed her for the way she had humbly permitted her, presented herself to him at his feet and had proposed. Something's going on here. It's not wanting to move. There we go. 
He blessed her because she had not run after the young men who were harvesting his grain, hoping that one of them would take notice and want to make her his wife. He called her his daughter because this is the way he had treated her and had protected all the young women working for him. She had shown herself loyal to the Lord and to Naomi, and all Bethlehem knew her virtues. Boaz spoke of her kindness and her willingness to become his wife and liberate marriage, even though he was old. His kindness was an even better instance of loyalty than the way she had worked so hard to care for Naomi and herself. Ruth showed greater or better loyalty than the first of her deceased husband by her willingness to perpetuate his name and liberate marriage rather than seek after a man younger than Boaz, who might have been about the same age as Naomi and Elimelech, okay? This is commentary, all right? So we don't really know what his age was, but it says that he could have been the same age as her, as her mother-in-law and her father-in-law. But we don't know that for sure, but that's something to take into account, okay? Now, Boaz and the whole assembly, that's all the faithful followers of the Lord in Bethlehem, knew that Ruth was a worthy woman, and Boaz planned for Ruth to remain a, a worthy woman. He told her not to be afraid because he would not reject her or her desire that he exercise his rights in a Levirate marriage as next of kin. It could be Levirate, Leverate, whichever, L-E-V-I-R-A-T-E, all right? Now, Boaz agreed to marry Ruth, but he acknowledged that though he was a near kinsman, there was one nearer to her than him. The nearest kinsman had the first right of refusal. He would need to give the nearest kinsman the opportunity to marry Ruth, the opportunity to inherit the land of Malon, the opportunity to have a child by Ruth who would inherit Malan's land and perpetuate Malan's name. And in chapter 4 of Ruth, we learn that the nearest kinsman was happy to inherit Malan's land, but he did not want to marry Ruth, which would complicate his inheritance. So Boaz married Ruth. Wow. Everything Naomi told Ruth to do, she did. And the Lord blessed her as they only hoped. Boaz sent Ruth with about as much grain as she could carry in a way that no one would know that she had been at the threshing floor. By taking this grain to Naomi, Boaz showed his appreciation to Naomi for encouraging Ruth to do as she told her. God will take care of you. That's what I, no matter what, I have learned, I have learned, I haven't always hit the mark, but in the last decades, the Lord has blessed me to continue to be a virtuous woman, and I thank him, I thank him, I thank him, I thank him so much, no matter what comes, what goes, uh, who, um, I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful that I haven't put myself out there and shamed myself or caused reflection on the ministry. On oh God, I just thank him. I thank him. I thank him. I thank him for blessing me and sustaining me. I thank him so much. Ruth did the same thing. She was a widower, and she took care of her mother-in-law. She took care of her, and the people saw her life. They saw that she was a clean, virtuous woman. She wasn't running after men. She wasn't taking men in, and God blessed her. He blessed her tremendously. She followed instructions to the T. She followed the instructions of her mother-in-law, who was a great woman, to want to see her daughter-in-law married and doing well. It's wonderful. 
It's wonderful. From Ruth's report and from the generous gift of grain, Naomi knew that Boaz would go and settle the matter as quickly as possible. She encouraged Ruth to remain patient because they would learn the results of, their, of her proposal that very day. Ruth 4 describes what Boaz did. It describes what Boaz did. Wow. My, my, my. Oh, yeah. 12, 16, 18. It describes what Boaz did. Now, I'm going to conclude this. It's kind of short this morning. That's a good thing, too. Okay? Noble birth and noble character. Now, we're concluding the lesson. When the Apostle Paul wrote about Christians in the church, he said not many of them were of noble birth. However, through faith in Jesus Christ and obeying Jesus' commands, they all could develop a noble character. It does not matter so much how we begin life, whether of royal blood or not, but it makes an eternal difference how we end life. So true. For example, Ruth began life as a Moabite who worshipped idols. She was, she was outside the people of God, but she married a man who had moved from Bethlehem to Moab with his father and mother. Though he died before they had children, Ruth learned about the true God from him and his mother, Naomi. Though Naomi's faith was feeble from much suffering, Ruth saw enough of the truth of God in what Naomi said and did to make the God of Israel her God and Naomi's people her people. After Naomi and Ruth returned to Bethlehem in Judah, Ruth's hard work and sacrifices for her mother demonstrated that she was a worthy woman with a noble character. Boaz and Ruth, or Boaz met Ruth as she was gleaning in his field, and he looked after her as he protected all the young women who worked in his fields. He treated all of them as though they were his daughters. Ruth knew Boaz would make a perfect husband. Therefore, Ruth asked Boaz to marry her according to the laws of God regarding childless widows of family members. After they were married, Ruth became the ancestor of many kings, including King Jesus. How about that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Obedience is the key. Obedience is the key. Follow you the instruction. That's why... Uh, Jesus tells us to follow the word, follow the word of God, follow the word of God, follow the words that he gave, that he left here for us, follow his example to the letter as much as we humanly can and leave the rest to him. And I say that so often and, and uh, one of my <laughs> acquaintances that I, one of my friends, I, she said it the other day, she said, I do the best I can and leave it to God. So I'm glad it's, it's rubbing off on people. I'm glad it's rubbing off on people. Okay? Number one, the questions for discussion and thinking further. Do you think Ruth would have made a good wife for Boaz? Why or why not? Number two, do you think Boaz would have made a good husband for Ruth? Why or why not? Number three, in what way did the law of God provide for the security of childless widows? Number four, what did Boaz mean when he spoke of Ruth's loyalty be, being better than the first? Number five, what reason did Boaz give Ruth for doing what she asked? What reason did Boaz give Ruth for doing what she asked? God is good. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. I love him. I love him. I love him. And I want to say um, that God is, and I'm saying it again, he's wonderful, he's worthy to be praised, he's super califragilistic, expialidocious, and I love him because of who he is, and I love him, 
because he had mercy, pity, Oh, pity on me, on my soul. He knew that I would need to be saved even before I was thought of. When he made the world, he was thinking of me. And I thank him for saving my soul, making me whole. And now I can make it into the kingdom of God. And you know what? We don't know the day or the hour when God is going to call our name. And we're going to transition into eternity. But I guarantee if you live right, heaven belongs to you. If you live right, if you do the will of God, first you have to repent if you haven't, and then you have to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Then you must live the life that God has laid before us through his son, Jesus Christ. You need to get to a congregation that has a sanctified leader, God will lead you in some way or another if you're not already in one. Some some could be in the congregation with a sanctified leader and still not be saved. You know, it's possible. So let me tell you now what you need to do just in case you're not sure. And you can ask God to forgive you of your sins. Tell God that you are you. Uh, are asking for forgiveness of your sins and that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Make that statement. God, would you forgive me of my sins? I repent of my sins and I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Amen. And when you pray to God, pray to God, you have to go through his son, Jesus Christ. There is no other way that we can get to God except we honor the name of Jesus. So when you pray, say in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. I love you. Greater Gospel Temple and Inspiration of God Ministries. God is a great God. Let me hear from you.